question for for <laughs> both of you is: you talked about you know, picking the brains of all the people in your building. Of what did you do in Philly, and what did you do in Denver, etc. The I'm I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to host a Bulls centric podcast, and the title of the podcast is "Organizations Win Championships," and it's a wink to Jerry Krause's famous line that was misinterpreted by a lot of people in, in my estimation, but I do think there's there's a, a germ of truth in it. And every day you get to the building, you walk by those trophies. You see those gleaming championship trophies. How informed is your personal mission as the people who run the Bulls? How informed are you by the quest for a championship? I think that's every year we have the same quest. Um, and we try to win a championship. And then if that doesn't work, we make adjustment without the just go to the next year. And I think coming to that building and seeing those six championships, I think it's some type of like kind of, you know, expectations and pressure. At the same time, we asking this group right now that is an advocate center is like, look, we have an opportunity now to build our own legacy and shape our future and and that's what you know everyone in that building thinking it's it's all about winning right so um you know when we brought billy in um we did you know half a year of evaluation and then when we kind of like turned that mentality to you know all focus on winning um and that that was the shift in the in the building as well so everyone you know Every day we're thinking how to win games and how to get to the championship. I think when you walk in the door and you see the six championships and you see all the banners and you see the retired jerseys in the Advocate Center, that's what fuels us, right? We want to be part of something like that. We want to build something like that. We want to create memories for you guys. Um, that's what fuels us every single night. Like I woke up two or three times in the middle of the night last night and just thought about like, what if we approach something this way? What if we approach it this way? What if we, you know, used our players in a different way? Like, might we sit and talk with Billy today or this afternoon or whatever it might be? You know, how do we improve our scouting? How do we improve our evaluation of prospects? Um, you know, those are the things that fuel us every single day. And when you walk in, you know, we feel the responsibility as stewards of this organization to put all of our efforts uh, together and sit and talk and discuss and create a plan and a strategy and, you know, we attack it. What's the partnership with Billy like, and, and why is he you guys' head coach? Well, first of all, Billy is one of the best communicators I've ever been around in terms of coach because he's he's constantly talking to players. He's constantly talking to us. You know, we, we sit, you know, like it, even when the season was over, it didn't take us long because we wanted to get back to, like, what can we do better? Um, we didn't like the way it ended, you know, what can, how, how we can improve. So those conversations are great. And we're on the same page with Billy all the time. And those conversations come from the mo the moment you walk in. And the great thing about Billy is that, you know, even, you know, not only after wins, but also after losses, you sit down, you have the same conversation, you know, so it's ongoing communication. And that's what I, love about our, our relationship, Mark and I, and, you know, Billy and coaching staff and front office, we, you know, every day we, we're trying to see how we can do better and how to win games. I love that after games, oh, sorry, Mark, you, you were going to comment. I was just going to say the player coach relationship is something in sports that, um, I don't think people truly, truly have, uh, an idea of, of how important it is. And Billy, He's the best coach I've ever been around in terms of communicating with his players. And we've got a pretty full gym right now. We just left the Advocate Center and our players are working out. And I can promise you, Billy has spoken to almost every one of those players today. Whether it's just like, hey, how was your night? Where'd you go for dinner? You know, it could be him working with somebody on the floor. That is invaluable. And that's something that neither one of us have to encourage him to do or ask him to do. That's just who he is, and that's part of his DNA, and that's why. There's another reason why he's our head coach. And what I like as a, as a fan and an observer is he, after a game, win or loss, he watched the same game I watched. And there isn't any criticism that I could levy 
that he won't beat me to. He's got the score sheet there, and it's basketball. It's all right in front of us. So when he says, they made 14 threes, we made six. And you look at how, how many assists that they had and how they moved the ball. He, he sees it. And, and I'm, I'm looking right now at a team that is a little on the short side and did address some of the shooting, but it still doesn't have a classic rim protection base here. How does this, how does we, how do we close the gap between what our opponents do from the three point line and what the Bulls do from the three point line? So it's a good topic for us to kind of like expand as well. So we obviously have to address our shooting profile, right? So we were, you know, lowest three point rate, lowest three point, point you know, made last year. And we trying to, you know, to change the shooting profile and then play a little faster, um, you know, move the ball better. But playing a little faster is going to create more three-point, sh- you know, three-point attempts because, you know, a lot of three-point attempts created is in our league or on a fast break because those are open threes and that's what we all and obviously corner threes are most valuable shots in the league but the the way you create threes is you got to run and and then you or you got to get to the paint and we didn't do a very good job this year i mean last year getting to the paint so what we're going to try to do this year getting to the paint kick out getting to the paint kick out so those are the things that we're going to try to improve and um, you know going back to last year you know you're looking Okay, the the objectives before last year were okay. We got to improve our record against top teams. We did that. We got to improve our defense. Uh, defense was not very good. So from January first, we were first in the league, finished top five. Great. We didn't do a very good job winning. You know, close games. We lost 19 games. Last shot, last minute, or overtime. But we are close, right? So, and everybody's very close, bunched in, you know, in the East. So in that environment, where can you create advantages? And another thing for our group um, for next year is going to be, you know, caring about each other and playing for each other. So it's relationships. Um, And this is what we're going to try to improve because, you know, in order to challenge each other, you got to, know each other well and you have to have relationships and um, everything that we do right now is to improve that side of the town and that's where it starts with nashville next week is everybody's together we're kind of in one place together we're going to go to practice together we're going to eat together we're going to have team functions together we're going to program the week so they do everything together from day one find a common purpose a common ba- uh, bond and build up from that. And, you know, I thought we had a pretty good run last year from the uh, All-Star break. We were 14-9 and or whatever it was. And, you know, incredible comeback against Toronto in the playing game. You know, up five late against Miami. And we all saw what Miami did, right? So it kind of speaks to the parity that Arturis is talking about. But what we learned from our team was when we had our exit interviews, they were a team, but they really didn't feel like a team. And that was one of the takeaways that we kind of we we put it on the board and said, we've got to do things next year. How so? How did they not feel like a team? I think it became, and it's almost like you just show up and you go to work. You, come, you go home, you show up the next day and you come to work. And they love to play and, you know, our coaches love to coach. And we were a team, but they didn't feel like they were really, really, really a team. And that is something that was important to us in the off season to address. And we're addressing it from day one when we get to Nashville. And I think we got there, right, by playing the way they communi- communicated with each other and they would be spending, like, in the meal room, watching other playing games. That was kind of forming, um, obviously, a bond there, but it was too late uh, in the season. So uh, we obviously started slow and, and that impacted last year. Well, and if you look at each game, you could see there were times where they would they would play through Vooch a lot and then perhaps get away from it a little bit if there was a, if there was a bigger or lesser lead like we saw that happen and then there were times where they got back to it and it's 
this is not a secret. Everybody saw the same game that we did. So you could even see it like during the game when they would either try to figure out how to work their way out of it. I think Billy, his approach was to let them figure it out at times before he would call a timeout. And then also to see how it came together in games where they were able to put that run together that you discuss. What did you like about last season that you want to build on during games, whether it's playing more through Vooch, whether it's something you saw during the game that they did well, or perhaps at the end of the season that they did well, that you want to bring more of to this next one during the games and, and maybe something we see on the court? Well, the four things that I want to mention again, you know, it's again, shooting profile. We've got to shoot more threes. We've got to, you know, take more threes. Because like going into every game last year, you know, you go minus 8.5 points per game. That's hard to make up every game. Um, then you got to play faster. Uh, we have to move the ball. And then again, relationship piece. So those are four things that we're going to, you know, uh, concentrate on, you know, this year. And, and the one thing that I could never predict last year before the season was that, you know, we're going to be 24th on offense. Um, with such a talented group, offensive group that uh, was struggling to score. Now, we improved scoring, but it was not at high enough rate because everybody else adjusted and they were much better. So we improved from the year before. We, we scored more points, but we still were 24th. So those kind of things that we pay attention to. And it's, it's hard for me because I'm thinking if I'm coaching the team, my puzzle to unlock is how can I make, how can I get the absolute best out of DeMar DeRozan and make sure he's professionally fulfilled and bought in and happy while still trying to accomplish all of these goals? And mm -hmm. to me, that's, that is the essence of, of solving this Rubik's Cube. So, and he's, he's a smart guy, he's a professional guy, he's experienced, but he also, he knows his game. What's, what's the secret sauce here? Billy is a great communicator. What, what, what is the way to make sure that, he's, that, that DeMar is happy and maximized? I think you, you said it. I mean, ultimately, it's about winning. And I think whether DeMar has to adjust his game a tiny bit or a lot, I mean, at the end of the day, we all want to win. And I think if we win, um, he'll be happy. His teammates will be happy. Fans will be happy. We'll be happy. Um, might he have to adjust his game a little bit, shoot more threes? Perhaps. Um, he's one of the best mid-range. He's got one of the best mid-range games in the whole league. Ever. And, you know, it's a relationship with Billy and he that they will figure out. Um, and that'll happen through conversations. Um, it'll happen through um, Nashville next week. And as we go through the preseason and into early on into the season, um, you said it. He's a smart guy. He's a really, really smart guy. He's got a high basketball IQ. He's got great feel. I think if you go back to when he was with San Antonio, he had the ball in his hands a lot, learned how to spray it out. And I think take he averaged so like seven, seven yeah, assists Take care of his teammates. So, so um, a good we have the utmost confidence that he will figure it out. We will figure it out. The goal is to win more games. And if you win more games, I think everybody eats. All right, gentlemen, who's your point guard? Wow. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I think it's going to be competition. Um, fierce competition is going to be a lot of good guards and that's mentality we're going into training camp uh, looking forward to it it's a good problem to have yeah, well, the other choices to make I mean to, just to, to yeah. see you know that's if you let be hard you, for Billy do yeah. you let you let Kobe White you know take it around the league once or seat or do you let or do you let the the veteran Javon Carter just you know show some people the ropes there there are some options out there that are that are yeah, pretty interesting I O's there and you know mm -hmm. he obviously had a you know, big summer, so so there's going to be a lot of guards for Billy to choose. I wanted to ask specifically about Kobe because the three of us had a lot of conversations about Kobe White where it was really clear that he had improved, and maybe even not statistically, mm -hmm. but just in watching him, you go, wow, like he's, he's starting to get it. So from guys who watch basketball and break down basketball tape, how would you explain how Kobe White improved last year? Well, I think his decision making improved, his ball handling improved, his shooting is improved. So he, and and actually found his voice as well in the locker room. So, so he we we were really happy with his development last year, and you know, and 
he's just going to get better. I think experience, both on the court, off the court, in the locker room with his teammates, I think that speaks volumes for his development. Um, you know, our player development department has done a really great job with our guys, our young guys, and I think Kobe White is a direct reflection of their hard work and his hard work. So I think he's been around, you know, four years now. So I think he's put in the work, and, you know, the one thing that AK talked about is he found his voice, and he's not afraid to speak up, you know, whether that's something positive or whether he's trying to challenge somebody. I think he's found his voice, and I think that's a great thing. I think for, for players when, you know, all players are aware of their statistics and how they doing and all this stuff, and they they all think about contracts. But for for Kobe, his his thing shifted to winning, and the moment that happened, I think that's when he evolved, and that's when he got better. You use the word development, and it's an important one because of your respective backgrounds with a reputation in Toronto for finding these these uncut gems in Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam. And of course the I don't know if the Jokic story is is one is, is a teaching story because that may just be one of the all time unicorns ever. But you saw something in there, obviously. And I look at Patrick Williams and how can we go from these tantalizing moments of recognizing what he's got in him and what he can be to just man like every night that could be eighteen and ten. Well, I think it's it's it, it it's on him now because he has you know in terms of skill set he has everything you know to succeed in our league and he knows it uh, he he had the very good summer um, you know he's gonna you know we we all expect he's gonna take a step forward and you know when you look at how you can improve as a team and you know Demar is gonna be Demar Zach is gonna be Zach Vooch is gonna you know, be a double-double machine. Your young players, when they develop, that's when you get better. You know, like, you know, Patrick takes a step forward. You know, Kobe gets better. Io gets better. Dalen, you know, gets better. Like, all those young guys, when they when they get better, and that's when you improve as a team because all those vets, you know what to expect, right? So... Anything? What do you expect from Dalen? <laughs> Nothing to add, huh? No, I'm just, you, you, you had, nailed it. You, you, you mentioned Dalen. The traits yeah. are obvious. The collection of traits is, yep. I mean, a scout can, can see, you don't have to be a great scout to see that. It's seeing what can be that's invisible right now. His understanding of, of playing at the right speed and understanding he doesn't have to be all things all the time. How do you, how do you develop that? He's got the physical profile. He's got length, athleticism. He can handle it. He can pass. He can get out on the break and run. What he's got to figure out is, how do I get on the floor? And I think with the group that we put together, it probably needs to be on the defensive end. So guard, be a versatile defender. And then when you do get your opportunities offensively, take care of the basketball. Don't turn it over. And if you're... Know where you're supposed to be offensively. So if you're supposed to be in the corner and it's a catch-and-shoot opportunity, catch it and shoot it. Catch it, drive it, pass it. Make a quick decision, but don't turn it over. Or limit your turnovers. But again, I think for him to get on the floor, and I'm not a coach, and I, I, we trust Billy, it's probably going to start on the defensive end and become a lockdown defender and somebody who they can rely on defensively. When you guys brought up Patrick Williams, I think one of the signs of also his improvement was probably the last six weeks of the season when you also saw his shot selection. And they talk about aggressive with him. And we heard Billy Donovan mention at the beginning of last season. How do you see him adding to that, whether it's him knowing he needs to take a three a little more often or what we saw with his rebounding anticipation, his spacing? What did you see that encouraged you and, and what he could take into the summer you just discussed? Well, aggression, that's, we talk to him all the time, right? So he has to unleash, he has to be aggressive. And, well, he's our also best shooter. Um, so so he has it in him. We believe in him. You know, we trust him. And, the, you know, he, he's going to improve this, this season. And, you know, all, all those young guys are, like, a, you know, they need to take a step forward for us to be successful. 